The Peacock Show Unidentified with Demi Lovato follows the singer and non-binary trailblazer as they explore the topic of paranormal entities and extraterrestrials in hopes of finally getting some answers. But this was shot a couple years ago and I don't think we've gotten any news about a reality show finding concrete evidence of an afterlife and causing society to collapse. So I think it's safe to say Demi doesn't quite reach that goal in season one. I mean, yes, society is collapsing, but that's like more Republican than ghosts. Anyway, aside from Demi's theory that some ghost sightings may actually be extraterrestrial encounters, Unidentified follows pretty much the same formula as other paranormal investigation shows, including ambiguous garbled audio recordings, a team of men with some toy spy gadgets. Oh yeah, and Demi Lovato singing inside of an abandoned brothel to help the ghost of a sex worker heal from their trauma. Wait, that one wasn't on my bingo card. This show just may be more interesting than I thought. So let's find out with a Demi Unidentified installment of Clip Breakdown. Hello television viewers, my name is Nick. Thank you so much for joining me once again on my channel for another installment of Clip Breakdown. This is the playlist where we dive into our favorite movies, TV movies, and other such content on the web. And we listen to it with a verbal spectrometer to see if there's a structured light resonating off of interdimensional goo. We break it down into clips. That's a little bit more fact-based speech for you. Let me get this cherry juice going. Make sure you click subscribe and give this video a big thumbs up up if you want to see even more paranormal shows broken down. But before I even get too far into this, I'm going to let my writer's room patron, Amy, explain how this show is. I have a quarterly call with these patrons to help choose what content I'm going to cover next. Here's what Amy has to say about Unidentified. It was really confusing. Like she's sort of channeling ghosts to, to ask about aliens. Nothing actually happened. There was barely any activity. So it was just kind of a lot of dramatic music. Okay, first First of all, I love the idea of channeling ghosts to ask about aliens. That's like calling up Santa Claus to ask about the Easter Bunny. However, I do take Demi's point that it's probably a better idea to refer to extraterrestrials as such. To refer to extraterrestrials as aliens is dehumanizing to actual immigrants who are also referred to as aliens in this country. So I'm gonna do my best to adopt that terminology from now on. Let's see why Demi decided to start this show and where their fascination with the beyond comes from. For a really long time, I've wondered what happens to us when we die. And in 2018, I almost found out. But not everyone who has a near-death experience has a story like mine. Damn, Demi really said, all right, it's season one of my streaming show. Let me get a full lace wig so I can simulate my drug overdose. If that were my rock bottom, I'd be like, listen, Peacock, nobody's more excited to relive the worst night of my life than me. So as soon as you green light production for 10 more episodes, I will be on that set dehydrated, suspicious of everyone, and covered in sores. But until we see what kind of ratings this thing pulls in, I'm gonna save the hospital bed scene for my Lifetime original movie. That's a joke. It's actually iconic behavior for Demi to be so outspoken about their sobriety, living with addiction, and mental illness since pretty much the beginning of their journey. Even here, for them to go public about the realities of their 2018 relapse and overdose is incredibly brave and vulnerable and inspiring. I would not be surprised if they helped save hundreds, if not thousands of lives by normalizing that cycle of addiction. The only positive things to come out of my drug relapses have been STD tests. Speaking of which, why is the injection for syphilis the same texture as Elmer's glue? And why do they have to burrow it underneath the muscles of my butt cheek? Just a warning, if you're still sore from one of those shots when someone paddles you at the black party, your body will go into shock and it's a buzzkill for everyone. I love that Demi said, yes, I can have smudged eyeshadow to illustrate that I'm on the brink of death, but the eyebrows stay perfect perfectly painted. To be fair, we weren't there when it actually happened, so maybe one of these paramedics used to work at Benefit Cosmetics and just wanted to kill some time on the ride to the hospital. I know if you left me for too long with an unconscious person, they would for sure wake up in full glam and see me painting their toenails like a cosmetology mannequin. I think the strongest part of this show is Demi bringing their near-death experience into the forefront of the story, both because it's very obviously dramatic and interesting, but more more than that, I find the frank discussion about that 
topic really important. And it's obviously a part of Demi's brand. Demi has always been outspoken about this type of thing and I'm so grateful for that. Why is this the campaign photo from an Urban Decay collaboration? I don't know about ghosts, I don't know about UFOs, but one thing I do know is this shorter hairstyle is really working for Demi. I never thought I would be happy to see the return of George Clooney's Caesar haircut from the 90s, but obviously it just needed a little more NB innovation to make it more androgynous chic and less from the office of Dr. Drew. So essentially the show features Demi and their sister Dallas and a a best friend named Matthew, who's also an actor, in an RV traveling the country to haunted locations. She's a model. Yeah. <laughs> so dramatic. That's hilarious. I'm obsessed with them. I need them printed on my boudoir. Boudoir. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> I gotta be honest, the most entertaining part of this show is when it's just Demi in the RV calling out their best gay for saying something stupid on TV. Don't let me hear you using a French word for the first time on camera and think I'm just gonna let it fly. Not in front of the peacock cameras, baby. They gotta know who the main character is on this show. That is the proper energy to bring to the production of your reality show, if you ask me. So the whole crew is headed to Vulture City, Arizona, which I think is like a, a abandoned town that, or it was abandoned once. It was like a gold mining town and a quartz deposit and then they up and left. So now it's like a historical site. And Demi has invited a team of paranormal experts called the Wraith Hunters to meet and like also lend their services. For the last 12 years, I've had the immense pleasure of investigating some of the most renownedly haunted places all over the country. I mean, you name it, I've done it. Shower sex with a ghost in Alcatraz prison. He said to name anything. I can't help it if that's the first scenario that pops into my head for a lot of things. It's what I've been writing under the looking for section on all my dating apps. Demi's sister Dallas is far more into the paranormal, whereas Demi is more into the extraterrestrials. I hope they have all the equipment, the Ovulus 3, the rim pods. I don't know what any of that means. <laughs> really? You've never heard of any of those things? Oh wait, did she say rim pods? I heard something different. Never mind. I don't know what that is either. But just to be clear, do any of the ghosts eat ass? Can we pull out the Ouija board real quick just to make sure? You gotta know before you get there. <laughs> so first up, the team meets with Jay and Marie Yates. They're the caretakers of Vulture City. It's almost like wet skin, almost like a lizard, but not like the scales on it. It's just slimy looking. Yeah. The round face, almost like a diamond shape. The shoulders are pretty broad. On her arm, on her hands and everything, it is like here, like, like, a like fur. Yeah, like a fur, like horse fur. I'm not discrediting anybody's first-hand accounts, but it is really hard to describe the extraterrestrials you've seen without veering off into full-blown Mary Brown from the Blair Witch Territory. Not that she doesn't seem great, but I mean a naked body covered in fur? That only narrows it down to, uh, everybody I saw at the white party this past weekend. Wait, did I just mention the white party and the black party in the same video? That's the yin and yang of slutty homosexual social events. Slutty homosexual social events. How am I not the most hateable person? <laughs> the way I slither out these shitty words. I am getting excited to hopefully see some spirits. Also, they talk about like the native people were afraid of this land because it seemed to glow from over a mountain, like in the night. So they assumed it was, you know, spirits or extraterrestrials. And then once they went and explored, they found that it was just the moonlight reflecting off a quartz deposit with like a vein of gold running down the middle. So I'm like, okay, so they used to think there were extraterrestrials and then they disproved it using their 1902 technology. So I expect a similar result, honestly, today. It has been said here that people that come here with other intent or other motivation, they typically have a more negative experience here. I see. Well, we're here for a show that will be on a premium streaming network. Do you know if any of these ghosts are fans of NBC? And before they answer, let them know we can get them a free three month trial of Peacock Plus. That's ad free. We just need their email address and credit card number. To be fair, for ghost hunting or whatever, Demi and team do seem to be like they're taking every step to be respectful. We don't know what energies we're coming into contact with. I'm just bringing some people along who know what they're doing 
and also can help us protect ourselves from the energies that are already there. Wouldn't it be kind of hilarious if ghosts actually don't exist and this is just like 20 people wandering around a museum in terror? I just love the idea of hiring a whole team of people who know what they're doing in the field of unknowable mysteries, experts in things that can never be proven with science. To be clear, I'm not talking about the native medicine people who perform a protection ritual because that's a spiritual practice. I think I'm more confused about the wraith hunters who seem convinced that you can have a full on conversation with ghosts in between the AM radio stations on a police scanner. I'm just like waiting for them to say something dumb every time. All right, well, uh, Matthew, Demi, would you like to join me in the brothel? We'd love to, Jerry. If you could just rinse your d off using the old water pump in the town square, it's sort of a house rule of ours. Oh, you meant to hunt ghosts. Yes, okay, sure. Rinse it off anyway, just in case. For later, for, you don't know. This wraith hunter is ready to give Demi and Matthew a couple tools of the trade. So what we're gonna be using tonight, this is a motion activated uh, music box, and I'll give that to you, Demi. Mm -hmm. And this. Box. Matthew said, a music box. Yeah, it doesn't sound super technical to me either. Was there a sale at the Christmas tree shop this year on motion activated dancing snowmen? Why is it a music box? And why are these tiny objects in the back of a flatbed truck? He's like, yeah, we could have just gone with a standard buzzer, but that doesn't have the same creep factor. While we sit in the dark for hours waiting for something to happen that we can spin into a storyline. Ever since that first Conjuring movie came out, we basically have to bring a supposedly haunted vintage toy from eBay with us everywhere we go to even be taken seriously. So the group splits up, Dallas goes into the assay building, which is like the money bank, old banky timey, and Demi and Matthew go into the brothel. They know that there are three spirits that uh, live in the brothel, and Demi seems to be having luck communicating with Carmen. Granted, they have like, it's basically like a theremin, like an antenna when you get close it makes the pitch higher. So they put that on the couch and Demi is able to get yes or no responses from the ghost by asking a question. And if it buzzes, it indicates yes. If this were happening to me and I knew for sure that there was no possible way it was staged and the device was working on its own, it would be really cool and creepy and convincing. And if that's really what happened here, awesome. Demi certainly acts like this is very genuinely shocking to them. But to me, it's like, if you're asking questions to a device and it beeps when the ghost is saying yes, that's the most easily staged evidence of a ghost or a haunting ever to be put on TV. And me, if I'm a TV production crew and I'm like, okay, we're hiring all of these people to come out here for an overnight shoot. And if we don't get something interesting to happen, the editors won't even make an episode out of this. You better believe I'm gonna hedge my bets by hooking up some way, some radio signal that's gonna cause that device to beep that I can do from outside the building. Just in case it's dead silence in the, you know, spectral universe and no ghosts are communicating. Like you still have to make something cool happen for the show. And the best way to do it would be to not even let Demi or friends even know that they could stage it, you know? If there was a good producer on this, they worked out like, oh, when I turn on this walkie talkie to channel 13, it makes the theremin go nuts. And then this stuff that Dallas is doing, the structured light camera, I'm like, what is f***ing structured light? Does anyone know? I mean, let me know in the comments if you do know, but is it truly like, are ghosts made of structured light? <laughs> oh, wow. There's two. There's two. Wow. Dear God in heaven, is our ghost a Spider-Man? Just like Dallas, I'm suddenly feeling this intense wave of misery and sadness take over me. I fucking hate those Marvel movies. I'm gonna think about something good for a minute so that I can stop crying. So using yes or no questions, Demi is able to ascertain that Carmen, this ghost, will only speak to Demi because Carmen doesn't trust the men due to their past line of work. So once Matthew and the ghost hunter leave, Demi is able to really get in there and talk with the ghost. Okay, she has trauma. She does? Mm-hmm. Okay. How do you and know? And that's why she doesn't like men. Okay. 
Okay, okay. I respect that. I respect yeah. that. Totally. I feel like as the non-believer in the group, Matthew is asking a lot of the same questions I have, but being completely ignored. He's like, wow. And what was it about that indistinct buzzing noise that gave you the word trauma? And the other two are like, do you mind waiting in the car again, Matthew? Thank you. Here's the key to the van. Go f***ing raid craft services. But no, Matthew plays an integral role in keeping everything connected and flowing like a little river of death. Do you like to sing, Carmen? You should sing something for her, Demi. <laughs> no. Maybe okay. if you sang that, sing a song as an offering, we could come back in the room. Oh yeah, yeah. Wow, it's a good thing this interdimensional being is so easily influenced by whatever ideas you all come up with. Why would I sing? It's like an offering so we can wrap up the shoot and go spend our dinner per diems. Oh, right, 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 yeah. Okay, good idea. Baby beluga in the deep blue sea. Yay, the men can come back in the room now, I bet. Living or dead, Demi Lovato or otherwise, I will never accept just a song as your sacrificial offering. It's a song plus a Sephora gift card, or you can wait out in the fucking hall. And a white cherry Slurpee. And a tropical nerd's rope. There's a 7-Eleven down the road. Don't let me down. Don't let me down, mortals. This is the part <laughs> of the episode that made headlines because it's a really good promo clip to be like, Demi Lovato sings to a ghost in a haunted brothel to help them heal their trauma. Like, yes, we love that. Try to tear me down. I will be rising from the ground like a skyscraper. What if the ghost hunter's head just spun around 180 degrees and he's like, now do cool for the summer. I'm not even being sarcastic. I think Demi Lovato's healing concert for the spirit of a long dead sex worker is my favorite thing ever put out by the National Broadcast Corporation. I mean, have you seen SNL lately? If I wanted to see Pete Davidson riff about how he's less hot and rich than his girlfriends, I would have sought out his stand-up comedy special and I didn't. I have, uh, I have a lot of gay friends. I like uh, my gay friends because I don't think there's like a more honest relationship between like a gay dude and a straight dude because there's just like nothing to gain, you know? So it's just. Truer words have never been spoken. I've never gained anything from having a conversation with a straight person other than the foreboding sensation that life on this planet is gonna be a little tough for me sometimes. So Demi and the team wrap up for the night and the next day they get on the phone with Demi's mother who is the one who really got them all into this parent normal stuff as kids. So Demi did all the communicating for us. Did you not want to say anything else because the boys were in here? Oh yeah, I actually remember that moment from right before the commercial break. The story producers were like, so we're feeling a little thin on the action this week, but don't worry, in this scene, you're gonna FaceTime your mother and let her know how much has happened so far, and we're gonna FaceTime the studio and let them know how much this show isn't working. I cannot stand a show that takes up the whole second act by basically recapping what's going on. And honestly, the fact that Demi, Matthew, and Dallas all split up into two separate teams now just sort of feels like a device so that we can make additional scenes out of having Demi explain what happened to Dallas and Dallas explain what happened to Demi while they were in separate places. And it's like, now you're just showing us black and white footage of stuff that's already black and white footage of stuff that we've already seen in this episode. Okay, okay. Can't you get like an expert on camera? Can't you talk to some, you know, firsthand people who've had terrifying experiences in Vulture City? Have them come out and get on camera. Maybe there's like someone took a viral video on YouTube and you talk to them about what it was like, like that seems like the easiest part. You just pull in sources and external people to help build the credibility that this is happening. Cause right now I just get the word of a couple people. Anyway, the next night it's more of the same. They split up similarly and go to different parts of the town. If you would like to say hello to me, can you make one of them go off please? What about Matthew? Okay. Matthew's like, damn, I thought they would have been less threatened by me if I was dressed like a baby from Rugrats. Like, why does he look like what Billie Eilish would wear to bed in 2018? As I mentioned, similarly to Demi, Matthew started his acting career on the Disney Channel with shows such as Shake It Up or So Random, which also seems to be where he was introduced to this 1920s toddler style of hat, which he seems to have been wearing in TV appearances for almost two decades. I 
wouldn't have said anything, but I saw that hat at least three times on the first page of his Instagram today. That's the unexplained mystery I need them to explore. The secret of Matthew's hat. The most groundbreaking evidence goes when the entire crew meets back up over this long shaft. <laughs> Don't laugh at the word shaft, Nicholas. A long, empty tunnel that's vertical. And they think they hear a ghost. They have this device that scans in between all of the AM and FM radio stations fast because that's apparently where ghost audio lives. <gasps> oh my God. Oh my God. Wow, undeniable proof of everything. In fact, I know that voice from somewhere. It sounds so familiar. Quick, zoom and enhance. Hello, television viewers. My name is Nick. Thank you so much for joining, joining me once again on my so channel. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. It's just like the twist ending of that movie. I've been a balding ghost the whole time. I'm going to email my channel network and see if it's too late to take that sponsorship with hymns. Hi, Jared. I just found out I am actually a spirit with no hair. Dot, dot, dot. The time has come. Send. Actually, reading that back, it might be a little concerning if he doesn't know the context. Is this why they keep asking me if I need to go back to rehab? I'm just a bad communicator. Luckily, Demi is not. According to this team, uh, they're a ghost magnet because both they and Dallas got all the beepy boopy theremin noises on their radio receivers. And that sets us up with all of the things that are going to happen in this whole episode. I have to agree with my writer's room patron, Amy K. That was not a lot of action. That was a lot of non-action, re-edited and repackaged to seem like a three-act story. They do wrap it up with Matthew seeming like, oh, I heard the ghost so clearly. So while Matthew at the beginning of this was a total non-believer in spirits, he now is obviously ready to go forth, fully open to their existence, where Demi is saying that they are now even more curious about the connection between spirits and extraterrestrials, or as some of the natives in this area similarly spoke of, star people. So there are tidbits of education in there, but more than anything, I think what I appreciate about this series is the representation for non-binary and queer people. And I guess that's it. <laughs> I loved the part where Demi sang. I hope Demi sings in every episode. Like I said, cool for the summer next. What do you guys think of Demi Unidentified? Did the singing heal you? your trauma, I would love to know. Let me know in the comments below. Also, give this video a big thumbs up if you want to see even more paranormal or Demi Lovato related breakdowns after this. But most importantly, if you're new to my channel, I would love to have you click that subscribe button right over here. That way you never miss new videos from me. I upload two new ones every week, so turn on notifications and you'll always be the first to know when I'm a skyscraper. You guys are all the greatest. I will see you next time.